Okay. Yes, uh, selamat uh, siang menjelang sore, teman-teman uh, Puka. Uh, salam literasi dan salam sehat semuanya. Uh, terima kasih sudah bergabung di kanal uh, YouTube Pustaka Kelana 2 untuk episode pertama dari Talk the Walk. Uh, perkenalkan nama saya Paul, saya hari ini akan menjadi host untuk perbincangan kita uh, di dalam Talk the Walk. Jadi apa sih Talk the Walk itu? Uh, di dalam Talk the Walk ini kita akan berbincang-bincang dengan uh, beberapa bintang tamu yang memiliki uh, pengalaman segudang lah di bidangnya masing-masing. Uh, jadi teman-teman uh, uh, Puka, kami ajak menonton dan menyaksikan supaya kita saling berbagi, berbagi cerita, berbagi uh, pengalaman. Semoga pengalaman-pengalaman uh, ini dapat menjadi inspirasi kita semua, walaupun di masa yang sulit seperti sekarang, kita terus dapat belajar. Baik, uh, tamu kita yang pertama uh, di Talk the Walk kita sore hari ini adalah Yuta Otake. Ya, uh, Yuta uh, mungkin sudah banyak yang kenal, tapi ada yang belum. Saya perkenalkan sedikit ya. Yuta dulu adalah uh, seorang fellow Rilo di Indonesia. Jadi Yuta uh, adalah seorang uh, dari Amerika. Sekarang tinggal di Jepang. Uh, Yuta setelah setelah menjadi fellow di uh, Rilo di Indonesia, memutuskan untuk berpetualang, berkeliling ke berbagai kota, ke berbagai pulau untuk berbagi ilmu, mengajar bahasa Inggris dan juga memberi pelatihan di banyak universitas. Ya, kita akan berbincang-bincang mengenai pengalaman Yuta berkeliling dan mengajar bahasa Inggris ya di di banyak kota di Indonesia. Baik, uh, selamat datang bagi teman-teman buka yang baru bergabung. Sebelum kita mendengar uh, pembicaraan perbincangan kita dengan Yuta, uh, saya ingin mengencourage meng untuk mendorong teman-teman untuk bertanya. Kalau ada teman-teman pengen bertanya tentang uh, pengalaman Yuta, uh, tentang pengajaran bahasa Inggris, atau tentang pustaka pelana, silakan bertanya nanti di uh, uh, live zoom, live chat zoom, ya. Sekarang diketik, boleh pakai bahasa Indonesia, boleh pakai bahasa Inggris. Nanti tim kami yang akan menyampaikan. Ya, uh, selama pembicaraan ini silakan langsung ditanya aja. Baik, uh, baik. Tanpa berlama-lama lagi, saya akan memanggil Yuta untuk kita memulai talk the walk kita pada hari. Oke, okay. Hai Yuta. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, hello, so great Yuta. to see you. So great to great see you. Great to see you. Glad to have you here. Hello, everyone. Whoever's out there. <laughs> yes. All right. Yuta, how's, how, how are you, man? How, how's life? Yeah, life is good. Um, a quick story for everyone. So he is the last person I met in Indonesia, actually. Yeah. Uh, you know, we all, I had to leave Indonesia quickly because of COVID. And mm -hmm. so I immediately called you, right, to help me yeah. get my suitcase. And you, yeah. still, you still have all of my stuff. I still have, I still have, I still have your helmet. <laughs> I still have your helmet here. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. it's crazy. One year has it's passed, crazy. and I promise I'll I'll come to pick it up eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, you you said I'll be back in about two months, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah here we are, a year later. <laughs> here we are, here we are. But yeah, it's good All to right. see you. Thank you for having me. Yes. Uh, what What about your work now? Uh, now you're in Japan. Uh, yes. So... Are still teaching. Yeah, basically, I had to leave Indonesia and I came to Japan mm -hmm. uh, to be at my grandma's house for a while, and then mm -hmm. I've continued to stay here and I'm I'm teaching, of course. All right, all right. But now, of course, uh, you're teaching online, right? Yeah, of course, everything yes. <laughs> in Indonesia, everything is online, which is yeah, very sad. Same here. Yeah. Well, uh, in the past, we have worked together, right? While you were in teaching in Indonesia. Maybe you can give a little background to our viewers. Uh, I mean, what were your works before? And then where, where have you been around Indonesia before? So my first experience in Indonesia was as an English language fellow. So I mm -hmm. spent about one year in Palembang. Palembang, ooh, nice. Ooh, <laughs> <of Impet. laughs> 
And so I spent one year in Palembang, and then the next year I was moved to Malang, Jatim, Jatim, yay! <laughs> yeah. Um, so those are my two years teaching at the university level, um, mm -hmm, doing mm -hmm. a lot of teacher training and also teaching at university at Uin. I did Uin, mm -hmm, Palembang, mm -hmm. and Uin mm -hmm. Malang. So I'm mm -hmm. very loyal to Uin. <laughs> uh, um, yes, then, yes, yes. So that, that was my first experience in Indonesia. And mm -hmm. then I mm -hmm. left Indonesia to mm -hmm. work with Fulbright in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the whole time I was in Taiwan, I was like, oh my God, I have to go back to Indonesia. And oh. yeah, I was like, oh, I have to go back. So I, I eventually came back on my own and mm -hmm. I just started traveling. My goal was to travel from Sabang to Marauke. Marauke, and okay. Yeah, I had all these great relationships in Indonesia from my time mm -hmm. there, including all of you and all of you at UI and all, everyone from the embassy programs like Camp Epic, mm -hmm. Camp Soar, yes, yes. Fulbright, ETAs. So I just used those contacts to keep traveling with one bag traveling. across Indonesia. With one bag. <laughs> Yeah, always one bag and one helmet. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, so, do you have any favorite stories teaching English in different parts of Indonesia? Yes, uh, I have a lot, but I, I think, um, especially now that I'm in Japan, I, I think one mm -hmm. of the things that makes teaching in Indonesia very unique is mm -hmm. that there's not as much of a wall between mm -hmm. teachers and students. Okay. So, for example, even when I was teaching at Uin, like over vacation, mm -hmm. I had a chance to go to everyone's house. Like I went to visit their oh, families yes. all over Java because <laughs> I love motorcycles. So oh. I had a chance to visit all of my students at the, and their families. Like mm -hmm. those things are a little bit difficult to do in America mm -hmm. and Japan because there's like a lot of, I don't know, the best there's just a lot of legal things <laughs> where yeah. like uh yeah we have to create this 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 wall, wall. This, uh, this wall. wall okay so so i really enjoyed that in indonesia where i could connect with students at a more personal level because i love oh, i love relationships like that's the main reason i like teaching so do you still do you still uh keep in touch with your students in indonesia of course yeah the yes. power of media. <laughs> yes <laughs> and what's up cool. WhatsApp, that's yeah, easier. I'm still in a lot of WhatsApp groups and I don't always yeah. read them, but there's a lot. There's always a lot of messages. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So you, you've been here for uh, several years, right? And then uh, I know a lot of students are learning uh, English and also, you know, a little bit of Bahasa Indonesia, right? You know a little bit of Bahasa Indonesia. Yep. But has there ever, has, uh, have you ever experienced or encountered any miscommunication or any problem with uh, the difference in language between Basque Indonesia and English? I think maybe not in, not always in terms of language, but uh, mm -hmm. when you go to a new place, mm -hmm. like miscommunication is very natural, natural. until you kind of understand how that culture navigates mm -hmm. and how they communicate. Mm -hmm. So just to give you an example, like the, I, I'll never forget, the first time I went to Palembang, it was maybe like mm -hmm. my second day. My hmm. colleague immediately invited me to her wedding. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, my natural instinct is to, I should say yes. So I said yes. And mm -hmm. I drove like very far in some unknown place to go to okay. her wedding. And then right. she was very surprised. And everyone later told me that mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to go. Like this was, okay. they were like, oh, like sometimes they're just trying to be polite. You cannot take that mm. invitation too seriously. Too so seriously. Yeah. But then like the next day, a colleague invited me to dinner with his family. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. thought, oh, this is just, he's just being polite. <laughs> so I didn't, so I told him I would go and I didn't go. Yeah. And then he, he was mad because he was waiting for me for many oh. hours. But okay. you know, these are the things like, I just couldn't figure out like when is someone really <laughs> inviting me <laughs> or when are they being polite? I think there's a lot of miscommunication like that when you mm. first arrive. Yeah. Okay. But but do you think like uh, a lot of Indonesians when they uh, try to speak English to you, do they feel shy or they're like very confident mostly? 
Yeah, luckily, I think because I'm always alone and I'm always in these new places, I feel mm-hmm. like people are pretty confident in terms mm. of uh, because it's like me versus 30 people. <laughs> so okay. they have the advantage. So I feel like they mm-hmm. have, <laughs> you know, it's not like 30 <laughs> foreigners arriving. It's usually just me. So I feel like that makes it less intimidating. All right. So so that's that's good. You know, so a lot of people are really confident with uh, speaking English, that means, yeah. Right. All right. right. So, uh, Pustaka Klada, the, our organization, is uh, is a non-profit organization focusing on improving literacy through books and reading, right? Uh, now, in your experience teaching uh, in different different cities, different islands, uh, how, how important is reading, do you think, in uh, learning uh, in, in your students or in Indonesians? Uh, young learners improving their English. How crucial do you think reading is? I think it's so important. I, I think for me, when I think about my own life, the mm-hmm. the stories I read when I was a kid are so important to the way I think right now as an adult. All right. And even if I read books now, it's almost too late. Like <laughs> okay. books I read now are more just for information at this point. Yeah. But like mm-hmm. the books I read as a kid really shaped my imagination and the way I think it was just it really it really does matter. And I think getting those stories into kids is a huge developmental yeah. must. Yeah. Like and yeah, and, and nowadays, I mean, uh, I think a lot of a lot of young learners now have moved, uh, they read a lot of social media texts. They use social media, but how do you think teachers and and schools, or maybe their parents, can encourage their their children to to read more, like books, like you mentioned uh, before? Yeah, I think the key is to not always obsess with this traditional definition of a book, because mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm the same way. I'm old, so like I really I have trouble absorbing a story from a screen. Like it has it okay. has to be like yeah. a, a physical book. Like I love pages. I love You know, like I like the smell of the book. Like that's just (laughs) my generation. But it's important for teachers to understand that just because a a student is using a phone, for example, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're not reading. Yeah, it's just a different. It's a different medium through which they're reading. So as long as we understand that and kind of motivate them to engage with these stories Mm -hmm. through platforms that they like. I think it really helps. Yeah, and and uh, what do you think about the uh, the students in the cities that you have taught? I mean, do you have any activities or do you have any uh, maybe ideas or kind of books that you would like to encourage? Well, should they start with children's book maybe uh, in improving their English? Yeah, I think I think definitely everything starts with stories. So stories. I think like nonfiction gets hmm. more important as we get older, but as hmm. kids, for me, it's all about how we develop that yeah. imagination. And like, I just, I remember so many books that I read when I was 10. Those are the mm-hmm. stories I continue to remember so clearly 20 years later, you know, yes. like it really forms the way I see the storyline <laughs> and character development. Like, I think that's why stories are so important for kids in particular. In particular. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Yuta. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, uh, teman puka, kalau ada pertanyaan, silahkan disampaikan di uh, live chat. Kita akan sambil uh, ngobrol-ngobrol. Saya sambil cek juga nih, apakah ada pertanyaan-pertanyaan di uh, the live chat yeah all right Yuta, we have uh we have a little segment here that we want to go down memory road we want to uh look back again from your travels in indonesia right so i see that you have taken a lot of photos and you have uh posted a lot of your photos in instagram let's uh, do it yeah let's do it <laughs> yes uh now we're, we're going to talk about uh, some of the photos maybe you can talk a little more about these these photos, right? Okay. okay. All right. Let me share screen first. Okay. All right. So the first one that 
that we have here, wait a minute, let me. Okay, yes. Wow, awesome. Do you remember this one? Yeah, yeah, this you're, take, in, you're taking in me December. down my memories now. <laughs> yeah. So incredible, yeah. yeah. Yes, so uh, for those of you who probably uh, don't know about Utah or probably, well, uh, if you have learned from uh, work with Utah, you know that this is your favorite pose, right? This is uh, our friend Baina always mentioned. This is the Utah pose. This is. Do you have any <laughs> soybean? <laughs> do you have that? Do you have that? You know, because you're like always open up your arms. Do you have any story behind this? Uh, this pose. Is it something special or? Yeah, this just happened. Uh, I don't really know how, how it started, but. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, in Indonesia, we take a lot of pictures, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I was just trying to do something different at the beginning, I think, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. keep it exciting. Mm -hmm. But then okay. it became like a kind of like a, a, a trend. <laughs> <laughs> so everywhere I went, I started to do it. <laughs> you started to do it. Yeah. Now, now we, a lot of people know Utah as Utah the teacher. How do you compare Utah the teacher and you, Utah as the person? I mean, how do you, is there any similarity or difference between you in front of people teaching or you outside of the class? No, I'm, I'm pretty much the, the same person. Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I think that's why I enjoy it. And it's not exhausting for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like I, I know a lot of people, they, they think teaching is so exhausting, but maybe some of that <laughs> is because they have to play a character. Okay. And okay. That can be really exhausting. But for me, I, to me, like I, I pretty much act the same way. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny. Yeah. 24 hours a day. So it just seems so, so I feel very natural inside. Natural. Of all right. Yeah. Now I, I really like this, this, this caption. You mentioned that education needs a space, curious students, and passionate teachers. Oh, uh, can you explain more about this? Yeah, so this was all initiated by mm. uh, Tati, the girl in the <laughs> very right, who is a, oh, right. an embassy program, Camp Epic mm -hmm. student. Oh, yeah. And yeah, this, this one of the most exciting things about my journey was just, mm. if people had ideas, I would just go okay. with it. Go because with the it. motivation okay. was never financial or I never had a boss. So pretty much mm -hmm. if it sounded cool, I would just do it. So, okay. yeah, she organized this all on her own. She mm -hmm. she didn't need like a fancy hotel conference or <laughs> something like that. She really just took um, a, a space in the park, mm -hmm. the government. Oh, so this is just this is just a park. Just a yeah, this is just completely an outdoor park. And this way, yeah. we had maybe like 30 students come mm -hmm. from around Jambi. Yeah. Oh, wow. And okay. It reminded me that like, you don't need all mm -hmm. these fancy things that we sometimes want, right? Like certificates or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, snacks or yeah. <laughs> like, because Indonesian workshops always kind of have these expectations. Yeah. <laughs> but all right. what you really just need is a space, right? And people who want to learn. Yeah. 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 And and the students, do you still remember because we have this is like uh high school students or uh elementary school. Or These like in the adults. picture are are all different epic mm -hmm. or sore mm -hmm. students. Yeah, alumni. Okay. And then alumni. Um yeah, so they're not participants, but um, no, I mean the, what about, what about the participants in this uh event? Do you still remember the oh always they, like yeah, that's why it's so fun. Sometimes it would be like a random high school student, but All also right. like a high school teacher, you know. High school teacher. So random. That's what I love. <laughs> so random. All right. Okay. What about, okay, let's continue with the, with the next one. Now, this one, this one's in Bali, right? I think. Oh, right? yes. Yes. Do you still remember about this? Of course. This was um, a school in Bali with mm -hmm. a, another embassy program alum, mm -hmm. Pebri, yes, okay. from Pebri and Pebri, yeah. from Camp Soar, yes. Camp Soar, and, all right. Yeah, this was another another one of my travels where I, I went to visit their school, we taught mm -hmm. some classes together, we did some chants, we did some songs. 
Yeah, as usual. So, and, and this is very interesting because uh, out, out of all of the places that I, I mean, I've, I've seen most of your pictures, but uh, every session in Bali, they wear traditional uh, clothing, right? So is there a story behind this? Yeah, so I, I love, uh, one of the things I love in Indonesia is how every, every city, every school mm -hmm. has these different uniforms or mm -hmm. different colors, different batik. Yes. Yeah, in Bali, Bali is especially colorful. Um, mm -hmm. This is like one day per week, all of the students always wear these. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, every week, once once a week, they wear these colorful, colorful school uniforms. Yeah. They're awesome, now, yeah. And, and, and you mentioned you've learned uh, from different culture too. How, how important is understanding uh, the culture of an area before you teach? I mean, do you do you learn about okay? So, uh, what about the culture in Bali or maybe like in Jambi? Do you do you do that? Do you uh, try to integrate the local culture in your teaching? Yes, definitely. But um, hmm. that was pretty difficult when I was traveling because I was traveling to a different city almost every day. So you <laughs> okay. kind of just you kind of just go with the flow, but. Um, that's a skill too, you know, like if you travel yeah. a lot, you just kind of start to learn how to adapt. You don't even think about it. You're just like kind of, yeah, yeah, you're just kind of adapting. <laughs> and, and usually like, uh, uh, usually people have this idea, like Indonesian, especially for, uh, with foreigners or people from different areas, they, they're very friendly. They're very, uh, they're very happy to welcome you. Do you experience that from city to city? How else the people around? Yes, and I think, I think that's one of the things I love about Indonesia, and why Indonesia always has like a huge part of my, my heart, even when I'm away. Is it just everywhere you go, people are are smiling and mm -hmm. helpful, and I think it's important if you return that same energy, it just keeps yeah. building. <laughs> like we're building something positive together. So that I, I really love that about Indonesia. All right. Okay. Let's move. Let's move on to uh, more more photos. We have. Whoa. Hey. Hey. Shout out with uh, uh, for some of our uh, cool friends here from Medan. Do you still yes. remember these handsome gentlemen? Of course. So <laughs> uh, I think Husni now is actually an access teacher. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And Abgan is the. The Dandut specialist. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, yeah. my, my, my question regarding this photo, how much do you miss Soto? Oh, <laughs> you can, yeah, you can see from my t-shirt, I love Soto Ayam. And uh, um, even in Japan, actually, I went, I went like two hours into Tokyo just to find a, an Indonesian restaurant. Really? Yeah, but wow. the Soto Ayam was just... Ah, uh, it's not the same, you know. It's not the same. It's just not the same. <laughs> it's yeah. not the same. And and uh, you mentioned that these uh uh well these brothers of yours, brothers of us in uh in Medan, they're all teachers now. They're young right. teachers. How fun is it working or collaborating with young teachers? Oh, I love it. I think for me, part of being supportive is always mm -hmm. making sure that so for example if i'm a teacher mm -hmm. one of my jobs is not only to teach my students but if there are younger teachers like how do we continue to empower them or put them in mm -hmm. positions where they can continue to love teaching so mm -hmm. um that was a huge part of my my journey and like even in this picture you can see uh afghan izaldi husni uh just seeing them teach is so wow. yeah it's so inspiring for me like it gives me more energy and then uh we traveled to bali gate together to lake toba wow <laughs> to do some workshops there together so just like very random adventures but yeah it, it was so special yeah what 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 would you say to our viewers who you know they're 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 probably thinking about teaching but not sure you know especially with this current condition how how would you encourage young young pre-service teachers to 
follow their uh, dreams to become a teacher? Oh, that is a, that is a big question. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big question. Do you have any advice? Sam? Like, do you have think, any advice? Yeah, I think you have to fight. You have to fight through those first tough years. I, it's mm. really important. It, it's so difficult at the beginning, and I, I just mm. remember even when I first started teaching in New York, like every day you just teach, go home and sleep because there's, there's just, <laughs> I did that for like two years. It's like sleep, prepare. I mean, sorry, teach, prepare, <laughs> sleep, teach, prepare, sleep. And so that's tough, but you know, you start to, to get a hang of get, it and that's when it really, on. that's when it really gets fun. And okay. Yeah. These epic, so gonna, these epic mm-hmm. students, when they teach they they were so incredible and, yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. I I was uh, I was very lucky too to to be able to work with uh some of them and then yeah, they were very creative. I really uh, yeah. yeah, and and that's true because you know, work seeing them work and then you know, they give us energy and also ideas teaching. Right. Right, right. And then you you travel far away with them, right? I still remember you mentioned stories. You stayed in one of their houses or like Oh, I stayed uh, everywhere. I stayed everywhere. wherever possible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Now let's 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 move. This is one of my favorite one. The next one. This is in Batu Sangkar. Ah, Batu Sangkar. I see. Can you? I've never been to Batu Sangkar. Maybe for those of us who don't know where Batu Sangkar, maybe you can explain where where is this part? Uh, Batu, Batu Sangkar is in Sumatra and wow okay. it's about it's like three or four hours from mm-hmm. uh, Bukitinggi okay all right yeah and this is and just another have... example of like the the whole year if someone contacted mm-hmm. me on Instagram <laughs> yeah <laughs> and invited me to their school I always said yes even if I never knew that person before so oh, really That's yeah how... this this school, I had no, no contacts. Just some teacher found me on Instagram, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I drove three hours on a motorcycle to visit their okay. school. And the students were just so excited. It was just, yeah, so incredible. Now you mentioned here three-hour motorcycle trip through the rain, but it was <laughs> worth it. What made it worth it, in your opinion? What What do you think about this experience? Made it all worth it? Three hour motorcycle trip through the rain. Oh, in Indonesia, it's always worth it because what happens is, uh, you know, this is a a perspective of a foreigner, right? Maybe mm. for you, all of you, it's normal, but for me, it's like I'll take a three hour trip and all mm. I see is the rice fields, right? And I'm thinking like, there's no way. <laughs> There's a big school here, right? Like I'm in the middle of nowhere. Oh, but then really? you get to a, but then you get to the school, and there will be like a thousand kids, like just, ah! wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just yeah, waiting yeah. and screaming. So that's something. Yeah, all of those mo- moments are unforgettable, and yeah, it, it was just so inspirational. Now, uh, this is this is an interesting question because uh, a lot of my friends asked me to ask you. Why, why did you decide to to travel? Why not just like stay in one city, like in Jakarta, teach in UI, for example, and then, <laughs> or teach in UI, in Malang, just stay there. And then why, why decide to travel Sabang to Maroke? Oh, I think I just, I just have a, a disease, you know, like <laughs> yeah. people who have it will know what I'm talking about. Like, uh, yeah, like Ibu Cecilia, I'm sure, has the same disease where you just, <laughs> <laughs> where you just constantly want to see more things. I just can't. I can never stop that feeling. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And especially while possible, I'm going to mm-hmm. always continue to explore. explore. So I, don't, I, don't, I have no interest in like having a stable house in one place. <laughs> it's just not something that I want. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Let's 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 move on to the next one. Um, ah, what you have here now a little bit different now to Balikpapan. Balikpapan. I think this is quite recent, right? Uh, now you also teach young learners because you mentioned here creating young leaders who are confident, kind, 
and open-minded. This is also uh, related to this interesting school. Now, sure. um, yeah, what now? Pusaka Plana also aims to educate and empower, especially young learners, because we work with a lot of uh, uh, children who wants to learn uh, uh, through books and reading, like we mentioned. What do you think needs to be highlighted in uh, improving young learners' interests, especially in learning English? Yeah, I think uh, so. This picture is a good example, or sorry, this school. This school is called mm -hmm. IGS. It's in mm -hmm. Balikpapan, and mm -hmm. um, I connected with an access teacher, Indri, to visit that school. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, just to give you an example, like the way they really build that skill set is okay. they're constantly, even like the youngest kids who are six or mm -hmm. seven or eight, they're always putting them in positions where the students mm -hmm. have to share what they're learning. Mm -hmm. So even when I went to visit, like they have these young kids, this kid is probably like eight years old, you know, but no, really? they're always training to have the student be able to mm -hmm. present what they learn. Mm -hmm. And you know, like the, the way you really master what you've learned is by teaching it, right? That's one of the mm -hmm. things we're always told. And so these kids just get, they really get passionate about that subject because yeah. they know they're going to share what they learned. And I think that's an important step. So it's not just okay. internal, like I read this and then it's over. You know, like, what is the next step? Mm. Yes, yes. All right. Now, uh, a, a lot of a lot of young teachers or a lot of teachers, including me, sometimes struggle when you have to teach young learners, you know, like very elementary school kids. But uh, you, you have worked with uh, younger children and, and then also with uh, high school students, even university level uh, students, also teachers. What's the what's the difference? What's the difference in approach? when you have to teach young learners? What's the difference in approach of teaching? Uh, with young learners, I, I really try to focus on the, the story angle. Mm -hmm. I think I said mm -hmm. this earlier, but yeah. the stories are what capture them immediately, right? Okay. It's once you can get them hooked onto a story, uh -huh. mm -hmm. then for them, even text, because of course, like a, a YouTube video at the beginning, mm -hmm gets their attention more, right? So yeah. we have to find something that battles that. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. I, right? And I think <laughs> what can really battle that is for them to understand that these words, these words on the page are <laughs> also similarly creating an entertaining story. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Exactly. Exactly. And they're very high, they're very, I guess they're very energetic. They have high energy, especially young girls, usually they're very excited. <laughs> and then do you always also like very, be very energetic in teaching children? Always, yeah. oh, but you're always energetic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's almost one of my weaknesses actually because I get so, I get so happy and energetic that yeah. sometimes that only makes the students more excited. And then I, <laughs> I have to, <laughs> and then, and, and I have to be like, okay, okay, wait, 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 everyone calm down. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I understand that. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, all right. Now, um, th this is this is the the next one. This is actually your last post, almost a year ago to the date. This. Oh wow. This is your last post on Instagram. This is also, I think, in Balikpapan, I guess. Or. Yeah, uh, because. Uh, yeah. Yeah, basically during my travels, I went to I went through most of Sumatra and Java mm. and. Kalimantan. Kalimantan, okay. But then COVID, so I <laughs> had to stop. So Kalimantan was my my last stop. You said Kalimantan was your last stop, and yeah. before you, you go to Japan. Now, uh, do you have any plans to travel again in Indonesia after the pandemic is over? Of course, I told of you course. I have a, I have a disease, so <laughs> yeah, I cannot yeah. stop. <laughs> so, so for for our viewers who probably hopefully this pandemic ends hopefully tomorrow but maybe not but maybe i don't know about tomorrow <laughs> i don't know about tomorrow. but soon soon so uh people if you are interested to learn with from utah all over indonesia so you can just contact you through your instagram or whatsapp yeah yeah i mean yeah 
<laughs> I'm in Japan now, so I'll, I'll need a little bit of time, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe later. Maybe later. Yeah, yeah. Right. So maybe they, so, well, uh, they can, they can always contact you through your Instagram. So everyone, if you are interested to uh, follow Utah and maybe communicate with Utah and maybe you want to ask some questions, you can follow Utah in uh, travel, teach, share. Basically, this is, this is what you do, right? <laughs> That's your Yeah, it's just, uh, it's a little, it's a little sad because uh, <laughs> basically I only use this to share my Indonesian experiences. So the moment I left Indonesia, I haven't touched Instagram since <laughs> the day I left. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, but yeah, people can send message from here. Of course, right? so of if course. You, if you, yeah. if you, or if they have if questions about questions about English, questions about teaching, I'm always accessible. Yes, and also uh, don't forget. Uh, Teman Puka, jangan lupa ya untuk juga memfollow kita di Yayasan Pustaka Kelana. Kita ada Instagram dan juga ada Facebooknya. Uh, kita, uh, kami Pustaka Kelana juga sekarang sedang melakukan program untuk uh, uh, literasi. Program literasi kita sedang berkembang. Nanti ada juga kompetisi, ada juga kontes untuk di beberapa minggu ke depan. Dan juga nanti untuk informasi mengenai Talk the Walk episode berikutnya. Jadi jangan lupa untuk follow kita di Uh, Instagram dan juga di YouTube dan juga di uh, website kita ya dan silahkan diakses supaya untuk untuk mempelajari uh, lebih banyak tentang pustaka klan. Oke, okay. alright, thank you Yuta for that uh, walk down memory road a little bit. Yay! Alright, uh, now we have some questions. We have some questions from. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it. We have questions. Let me check. Let me check. We have the first one from, wait, 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 from Nandia. Do you remember Nandia? I think we also work together with Nandia from UE2. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. Nandia asks, yes. Nandia asks uh, what are, do you have any recommendation titles uh, for seven-year-olds? Or maybe do you still remember some books that you remember when you were like 10-year-old? Seven is pretty young, so I don't, uh, I can't think of seven from the top of my head, mm -hmm. but definitely the author I recommend most for kids, just from mm -hmm. my experience, is Roald mm -hmm. Dahl. Roald Dahl, okay. Yeah, so that's like okay. James and the Giant Peach, Yeah. Uh, Matilda. Matilda. Book. Yeah, all of those. Oh, I read those religiously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I read some of those books. I like I like Matilda. I think uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory also. Yeah, yeah. Well, Charlie right? and the yeah, Chocolate that's... Factory. And one thing that really helps uh, in terms of engaging young learners, like even when I taught mm -hmm. second grade, it really mm -hmm. helps if if something exists in, for example, mm -hmm. if there's a movie, mm -hmm. like you kind of negotiate. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah, we yeah. can read the book and then also watch the movie and we're kind of We're getting both, both done. <laughs> yeah. Both done. Yeah. 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 All right. Now we also have questions from uh, Zilal El Furkan. Uh, Furkan asks, any recommendation for online reading resources, especially oh. stories for elementary grades, yeah. uh, especially because we are now having distance learning. I actually I have a lot. Hold on. Let me just okay. quickly look through my. Yeah. So the first site I read, uh, what, what is the best way to, for me to share this? Through the chat? You can share it. Uh, you can share, do you, is it possible to share a screen and you open the page? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, oh, you, see, okay. you see my browser, right? Yeah. Cool, cool. So these are some of the websites I, I'm using currently right now as I te I'm teaching a lot of reading. So mm -hmm, the Scholastic mm -hmm. site, mm -hmm. this one's called Story Starters. Um, okay. This is not a reading necessarily, but it's what I use after reading to create stories. It's so cool. So basically, let's say yeah. I want to create an adventure. And then uh, let's say third grade. Wow, this is awesome. Yeah, so it gives my class like ra very random prompts 
to write something. Oh, wow. Right? So describe an adventure you might have with a bold insect who returns stolen money. (laughs) Yeah. And if they don't like it, you can change it. So, yeah, this is one site I use a lot. Also, um, sorry. I really recommend these sites that are completely free. So Mm -hmm. for everyone listening, ReadWorks. ReadWorks, okay. Yeah, if you just sign up as a teacher, everything is free. Mm -hmm. Everything is free. What's really cool about these sites is... Is, you know, like, it's so easy. So for example, if you want to find grade one, you can just, you can just easily um, adjust. So on that note, I really recommend, so read works. I also works and story starters. Oh, yeah. Read theory. So I won't go into detail for all of these, but I'll just give you the names, right? So read theory. I really recommend this is like an LMS through which you can track all of your students reading. Mm-hmm. So if they don't read, you can tell you, you can tell them that, you know, they didn't read. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Get Epic. All like right. Camp is also very good. And then let me just give you a couple more. What's the other one I really like is, um, I don't see it here, but Everyone should be reading News ELA for sure. News ELA. Okay. Yeah. I think I'm familiar with News ELA. Yeah. These are great. So those are just some, there's a lot more, but for now, those are the sites I've been using a lot. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm going to use some of those. (laughs) Yeah. Anyone anyone can always send me a message and I'll just send you all the links if that was too quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll put it in the, uh, in the chat. Yeah, and then later we also we can share it later in in our Instagram and our uh, social media. All right, now uh, we have question from uh, Rebecca Watimena. Yuta, uh, have you ever found any uh, funny advertisement or public signage of or information that has mistranslated English? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, so many, so many around the world. Everywhere I go, there's always a lot of uh, a lot what of funny ones. Do you, you know everyone, uh, Paul? You know uh, what? I don't really know it right now, but you have to recommend Pa Spencer's Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. His whole, I don't have it right now, but he has a whole Instagram dedicated to finding that like finding signs that are incorrect. So yeah. Rebecca, definitely are, check that out. <laughs> we are going, we're actually going to uh, include uh, Pat Spencer later in our program. That's good. So, oh yeah. So you can yeah. definitely focus on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So everyone, please wait on that. Uh, our program later, we're going to talk about this funny mistranslated signage yeah, information. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Let's continue. We have from Nur Hasana. Any recommendation for good novel for Indonesian high school students, especially about friendship? Uh, maybe in English, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good novels about friendship. That's pretty specific. Um, maybe maybe not about friendship first. Maybe while you're thinking, do you have any recommendation for uh, high school students? Any novels? Our books yeah there's a lot i mean there uh, one thing i really recommend is hold on let me also just share another site so there's a website that i'm sending you on the chat right now okay called common uh, lit so this is called common uh, lit. yeah so okay. basically, this is this is kind of our um, our high school curriculum all laid okay. out. So if you if you're curious about what high school students in America are reading, mm-hmm. everything is there. So for example, so, you can so like this common yeah common lit common right? lit yeah. yeah. So uh, we won't go into detail now because yeah. uh, we don't want to sign up and stuff but yeah yeah so you can just yeah. even look at like what does a ninth grade student read 
Mm. And it will give you access to so many different titles. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. Now, we have from Chiu Eng, I guess. Uh, which part of Indonesia you haven't been to, Yuta? And you look forward to being invited to? Oh, teach. my God. That is a good <laughs> question. Oh, man. You know, uh, basically everywhere. But uh, if, if COVID did not force me to leave, my next step after Kalimantan would mm -hmm. have been, um, where was I going to go? Oh, Sulawesi. And also, Sulawesi. I already had a plan to go to Lombok mm -hmm. and Kupang. Yeah, so wow, basically, man. yeah, basically, yeah. I was trying to slowly go east. To the you know? east. To yeah, be east. Slow, slowly. And eventually, yeah. <laughs> Marauke, yeah. Marauke, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yes. Eventually, maybe like three years later. <laughs> three years later. <laughs> so, because you have, like, you've been to uh, Sumatra, Kalimantan, and Java. So, now you slowly, actually, you were planning to go to the east. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. All right, so we have more questions. Um, cool. Uh, ha Hanum, Hanum Rahmi Putri has a, has a question. Do you think that bilingual books confuse children? Um, bilingual books mm -hmm. would be confusing if mm -hmm. they're like completely new, but as long as it's the local language, right? The Your first mm -hmm. language and the second language mm -hmm. that you're learning, I think that's mm -hmm. an excellent, excellent way to read, excellent resource. So it won't be confusing in your in your opinion. As long as the base language, right, is also your base language. I mean, like, mm. you don't want to have two foreign languages at once. That doesn't make sense, yeah. right? But yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's so uh, that's that's also that's also fine. Is this right. Hanum Hanum from Pukambaru, or is it a different Hanum? I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. I so have a have feeling a Hanum. lot of these people I I met before. You know. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, um, now, from your experience meeting with teachers and working with different schools, um, do you do you feel hopeful about the education in Indonesia, especially in in English? What 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 makes you hopeful about uh, English in learning English in Indonesia? Oh, I, th I felt hopeful almost every day when I was traveling through Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I would be lying if I said all the schools are great. Mm -hmm. I think that having visited maybe like 400 schools, it, I cannot say that every school is great, but I can say mm -hmm. that almost every school has a teacher that's great. Okay. And because right often like it's a random teacher, like that one teacher at a school mm. who would message me on Instagram to invite mm. me and maybe like their school has no, no interest in me, but all it takes is really that one teacher. Okay. Who's real. And you can just see like that teacher cares so much and is so passionate about teaching English and mm. about helping to connect to their school community. And, you know, like, <laughs> For me, if I see that one teacher who's working so hard, I feel very hopeful. Okay. Yeah. All right. What about what about the involvement of parents in in encouraging their children to study? What's your experience in this? So to be honest, parents are something I am not as familiar with mm -hmm. um, because I generally always worked with teachers or directly, like mm -hmm. when I'm visiting a high school, for example. Okay. I, I don't get to the parents, right? So, oh, okay. yeah, that's a that's a good question. I, I'm not really sure. But do you think uh, do you think it's important? Uh, to so a lot of a lot of people like uh, parents with children probably they they are too busy. Uh, but now with the pandemic, they they are closer to they're more involved with their children's <laughs> education, right? Because they have to stay at home too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, how how would you also encourage the parents here uh, to uh, to always uh, encourage their children to keep on studying, especially English? Yeah, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to give advice, especially when because I'm not a parent, so it's hard <laughs> for me to judge. But all 
all I would say is there's a difficult balance, right? Between like mm -hmm. really spending time with your kids, but also because that's my belief for teachers as well. Like you cannot mm -hmm. tell a kid to do something that you yourself don't do. So for example, okay. like you can't tell your student to be curious if mm -hmm. you're not always curious, right? Or you okay. cannot tell your students to chase their dreams if you're also not chasing your dreams. And I think the same mm -hmm. thing applies to parents. So, so right now we're talking about reading. Like it's really mm -hmm. difficult to tell your kid to read if okay they know you never read <laughs> yeah right yeah so because yeah, like that right, right. we're kind of copying modeled behavior so i think yeah that's my only advice okay but this is true for teachers too we're constantly modeling right yeah 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 so yeah it's, it's also important to uh what you call that you have to uh, encourage parents also to be more active yeah to model this right. uh, active learning to their students their children right yeah all right um do you have any uh do you have any advice for indonesian students who probably always think english is intimidating probably makes them shy you know? do you have any any advice for for our young viewers in learning english yeah uh i actually just this month finished this book called um Oh wait. oh wait! I guess it can, <laughs> I guess it's hard. When oh, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's called Atomic Habits. It's called Atomic, Atomic Habits. Habits. And um, the one takeaway from this book is that if you improve, so statistically speaking, right? If you improve one mm, percent yeah. mm -hmm. every day, if you improve one percent every day by the end of the year you will be 37 times better. Oh, wow. Yeah. At That's that skill. So basically what I'm trying to say is it's always better to do like five minutes every day and just never give up and continue to do that five minutes in, instead mm -hmm. of like the first day I do three hours, but then now I'm tired. So I'm going to take a break for two weeks. You know, like it's okay. really about, <laughs> it's about that, like, just the willingness to improve 1% every day. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So never give up. Never give up. Always right. keep improving. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So our time is almost up, Ita. Do you have any uh, things you want to say to our Indonesian viewers? Uh, maybe to uh, say hi or <laughs> to... Uh, uh, yeah. Mainly, I'm just so happy to, to talk to everyone. And yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sure a lot of people um, are the same people who helped me through my, you know, my, my whole time in, my whole time in Indonesia was about people being so kind to me and people always helping me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I remember the most. And I can't wait to hopefully, very hopefully. Soon, <laughs> very yeah, soon. go back to that kind of lifestyle. Oh, that kind of lifestyle. Yeah. All so, right. I really want to say thank you to everyone who has always supported me and I can't wait to see everyone again in person, yeah. not on zoom. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. All right. Thank you very much Yuta, for your time and your insights. I want to do a quick shout out to our good friends in Pustaka Klarna. Also, uh, we've worked with her, Baina. Baina is having her graduation ceremony. Yay. Congratulations, Baina. Yay. No, <laughs> and also, and also for Ibu Grace from Pusaka Ibu Klarna. Grace, Woo -woo. it's her it's her birthday today. What? Yeah. So happy birthday, Ibu Grace. Happy birthday, Ibu Grace. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We, we miss working together with you in our <laughs> in our teaching in Indonesia. Uh, yeah. We always talk about you, Tan. Yeah. You know, I, I love I love your team so much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is it, when when is Ranti's birthday? <laughs> okay. We have anyway, to <laughs> happy birthday to all of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy birthday to, to all of you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, Yuta. Okay. Um uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Yuta. Uh, I'll see you uh, later. Uh, uh and let me close this talk the walk episode, uh, the first episode.
Baik, terima kasih kepada uh, teman Puka yang sudah menyaksikan uh, Talk the Walk kita pada hari ini, yang sudah bertanya, terima kasih banyak sudah bertanya. Uh, semoga uh, pembica- perbincangan kita pada siang hari ini uh, dapat memberi inspirasi, juga mendapat memberi uh, pengetahuan yang baru uh, untuk terus belajar. Seperti yang kata Yuta, never give up. Ya, walaupun di masa-masa yang sulit seperti sekarang, kita harus selalu belajar. Um, sekali lagi kepada para uh, viewers kami yang mungkin belum bergabung dengan Pustaka Kelana, jangan lupa untuk follow kami di Instagram dan di Facebook dan juga silakan cek website kami ya San Pustaka Kelana ya um, untuk di Instagram nanti kita akan melakukan banyak uh, program baru ya kita akan terus mengupdate uh, media kita nanti ada episode-episode talk the walk berikutnya dengan tamu-tamu yang juga uh, banyak pengalamannya sehingga kita juga dapat belajar terus uh, dan nanti juga ada lomba-lomba kontes yang menarik jadi uh, kalau bisa uh, selalu di, di follow terus ya di up, diikuti terus ya um, sampai jumpa uh, sampai jumpa di acara talk the walk berikutnya Uh, salam literasi semuanya dan sehat selalu. Thank you very much Yuta. I'll see you again later. Bye man. Wee. <laughs>